here in Natalia. Day two, T minus one days to the actual start of the Dura d'Italia. Uh, kind of a rest day here at Flow Bikes. We got out for a bike ride ourselves. Uh, rode up the stage one climb to the Basilica. I got dropped by Team Sunweb and plenty of Trek Sega Freighter riders on the way to the top with a bunch of other yahoos out riding the climb uh, amongst the World Tour pros. Um, then enjoyed some beautiful Italian roads uh, beyond the climb. Uh, riding here is really phenomenal. And uh, yeah, kind of just planning and prepping for the big start tomorrow. Along in Italy, stage one of the Giro d'Italia is basically the food capital of Italy, this is what we've been told. We're going to go eat dinner in Bologna. Normally we're pretty bad at dinner. Luckily we have Andrea with us who is good at finding good Italian food. It's your line. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so Bologna is in the heart of the Emilia-Romagna region in Italy. Andrea, could you tell us a little bit about what kind of food we are going to expect tonight? Well, sure. Well, Bologna, it is the real food capital of Italy. We are possibly in the best uh, place uh, in Italy and, in my opinion, one of the best places in the world for food. So tonight we are definitely going to find out why Bologna is so interesting about food. So what do you know about Bologna? What's uh, the... Bologna. The what? Bologna. The meat. The what? The bologna meat. <laughs> the, well, I still don't get it, but I think you mean tortelloni? Tortelloni, that's yeah, what I was trying to say. Tortelloni. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was expecting you saying something about the spaghetti bolognese. I am uh, bolognese. Yeah, yeah let's nice. go get some of that. No, because in Bologna you don't eat spaghetti alla bolognese. So this is lesson number one. All right. All right. <laughs> we have a lot to learn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Andre, just uh, what, what, you just tell us what to eat. Yeah. Okay. All right. That, that's that, that easy. makes it easy. That's yeah, easy. We, that's we, we easy. usually have a really hard time actually finding food. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we're traveling, it's uh, it's a bit of a struggle. We yeah. usually get done working late, have no idea where to go. Yelp isn't super helpful. Yeah. Uh, so well, it is very nice to have some local knowledge on yeah. side. I have a I have a difficult mission, you know, taking around some Americans uh, in Italy. And one is vegetarian, and when you are in the capital of, uh, let's say, the meat, meaty food in Italy, this is going to be a good challenge. So this is interesting. So it's nearly 8 o'clock, but this is not dinner time yet in Italy, it's aperitivo time. So you see a lot of people uh, drinking some uh, white wine, Prosecco or uh, apple spritz and get some uh, finger fruits. Dinner generally, especially on Fridays, starts not before 8.39, sometimes even later. Okay, so if you want to be like a local, don't look for a restaurant before 8.30. Basically, this is what we're talking about. So most of the people know Bologna and Emilia Romagna because of the Parmigiano Reggiano, which is one of the best cheese we have in Italy, uh, and it comes from the region. Uh, this is all the fresh pasta. Fresh pasta is not dried spaghetti, it's made with fresh eggs, and you can have it in many different shapes. So we have the tortellini, we usually eat them in broad, okay? And these are the tortelloni, which are stuffed with, uh, can be ricotta cheese and spinach, or uh, some meat, sometimes with also some mushrooms, different kind of uh, stuff. Uh, and these are probably the best uh, food we can get here in Bologna. A part of the lasagna, of course, alla bolognese. In the bologna, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Michael had a fun fact that uh, 550 liters of milk go into making uh, a wheel of parmesan. A wheel of parmesan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's true. That's a lot of milk. Something that is really famous, not only Bologna, but the whole Emilia-Romagna region, is the prosciutto, 
uh, everybody knows about prosciutto di Parma or prosciutto crudo. It doesn't come from Bologna, but uh, a city nearby. Uh, this is actually the most precious pro kind of prosciutto you can get in the region. It's called culatello. In Italian, culatello means small chick, all right? So maybe you, you know where it comes from, <laughs> which part of the pig it is. But it's actually really, really good. That's about the same price as Franklin brisket in Austin, Texas. The most prized brisket in the world. <laughs> I don't know anything about either of these things. Can we go find some vegetables? You can see, so the orange drink that you see on most of the tables uh, at this hour, aperitivo, it's the Aperol Spritz, which is the most typical uh, aperitivo drinks we have in Italy since 20 years now. It's not from Bologna, it's maybe the Aperol. You know Aperol? No, you don't. No. <laughs> well, anyway, it's something similar to Campari. You know Campari? I know the name. Oh, oh yes, yeah, similar. Uh, made with Prosecco wine, a slice of orange, some uh, soda water. And this is what all the Italians drink. What vegetables did uh, Bologna have? None. None? Why? <laughs> Well, generally, generally in, uh, when you pick up a good restaurant in Bologna, you only find uh, food from Bologna. So, and this is a very, let's say, it's a kind of famous restaurant uh, here in Bologna, so most of the dishes are local. But something that is really, really uh, considered local as a starter, it's pane e ragula bolognese. Which is basically a sort of a bruschetta, but instead of the fresh tomatoes, there is this meat ragu on top, which is really nice. No spaghetti <laughs> at all. No spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti alla bolognese, it's a fake uh, dish. It's like pizza with uh, french fries on top uh, on it. Something similar. It just uh, simply doesn't exist. So Sangiovese, well, Emilia Romagna, uh, has produced some good wines, but it's not famous for, let's say, big, big uh, wines like Piedmont or Tuscany. Uh, they actually have uh, three um, main variety. One is the Sangiovese, which is uh, uh, the most uh, popular wine, and it's the same grape used for the to make the Chianti in Tuscany. But this is made in a simpler way. So it's a very nice wine uh, with food, but definitely not a meditation wine. Then they have uh, Lambrusco, which is again something really different. Generally, it's served um, cold and uh, sparkling. It's one of the very few uh, sparkling red wine we drink in Italy. Uh, more like a summer uh, wine and very light in alcohol. O and I. Yeah, Bologna. You're the Bologna, the, like the cured meat of Bologna in the U.S. is known as bologna. And, and it's, why? <laughs> because that's what we call it. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. In Milano, we call this Bologna. Really? Even yeah. if it's called mortadella, but in Milano we call it Bologna. Is it it's from? Because Bologna. it's from Bologna, yeah. yeah. Cal Calzolio. 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 Calzolario. Okay, try again. Calzolario. Bravo. Calzolario. Uh, yeah. So we are having a, a galletto, which is a, a rooster. Uh, this is not the full rooster, but I think about three quarters of it. Uh, cooked in the oven with some nice uh, baked potatoes and um, tomatoes and uh, rosemary. Uh, then, uh, well, this is the same for everybody, except for Michael. Michael is having uh, tortello, tortelli stuffed with asparagus and uh, ricotta cheese or... I uh, can't remember what, was, what cheese was that. Was it but, uh, no, it was the burrata. Burrata, it's uh, wow, that's fantastic. It's the milky part of the mozzarella. 
So it's the richest part of the mozzarella, super fresh. And I was told by the waitress that if I ordered a Mista salad, I would be like a little old lady. <laughs> so I ordered some vegetables, which I'm not allowed to eat at the same time as the pasta. The pasta comes first, and then I may eat my vegetables. <laughs> you, theoretically, you're not supposed to have that plate next to you when you're eating pasta as yeah. well. But right, they're supposed to bring it out after, but then yeah. y'all would be done eating and then it would be awkward because you have to wait for me. For so, yeah. There is always some room for dessert. Always. Hey, you told me earlier you never say no to tiramisu. If they, if they have tiramisu, you always say yes. But that, that's the rule in Italy. Yeah. That also because it's uh, the tiramisu is always different. So wherever you go, if it's all made, everyone makes the tiramisu in a sort of personal way. Confessions. Tiny elevator party. Shehan, rate your Bologna food education tonight. Uh, education, always <laughs> top marks with Andrea. Always top marks. Andrea, do you think that Ian is going to be a better Italian now? No. No, he, Ian's hopeless. We, we tried last time. <laughs> no success at all. I did learn some Italian today. Uh, uh, somebody said, Belle biciclette, complimento! And I was like, he was like, beautiful bike. Well, now I know what that means. <laughs> he was actually pointing at my bike. Nah, yes. <laughs> He's still gonna say baloney. <laughs> <laughs> baloney.